we understand the pain that they go through mm. you know the entrepreneurship journey is not a rosy journey it's a bumpy journey it's a challenging journey and we want to be part of the solution in this journey where uh, we design solutions and packages for them that are <coughs> almost uh, the most affordable and cost effective packages across the entire region but not only that we reflected our ethics and we say that these packages are all inclusive literally there is no hidden hidden charges why because we want those entrepreneurs to focus on securing their business and growing their business not on the bureaucracy of the government so we tried to kind of all these tests i retired All right, all right. Welcome back to a new episode of Tell Me Why. Joining me in the studio is one of the most special guests I'm going to have in here. Um, he's someone that I met at an event, um, made us all laugh, has a sense of humor, uh, and we're going to get into that. Um, <laughs> always loves it. He loves to speak about the presence of women in his life, and um, he definitely gave us a good laugh during the event. Joining me is Ismail al Naki. He's the Director General of Free Zones Authority in Ajman. How are you, Ismail? I'm fine. Thank you very much for receiving me here t- today. And uh, it's such a, a pleasant moment to be here with you. And uh, indeed, it was a pleasure meeting you at the uh, Women Entrepreneur uh, event. And it was a joyful event. <laughs> and thank you for putting that amazing event together. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. So before we dive into you know a lot of the technical information that we want to speak to you about today, I want to get to know you a bit more. Tell us about yourself. How did you start at the Free Zones Authority of Ajman? And what was your experience like before that? And um, was it something that you thought you would get into? Well, uh, it's a quite an interesting story. But if I go back to more the beginning of my career, um, and this become, might be quite interesting for uh, the fresh graduates who are choosing the path that they want to follow in, the, in their life. I remember applying in uh, three organizations, EPCO, okay. uh, Emirates, and Dubal. And uh, fortunately, I got accepted on all three of them. But the most interesting package that I received was from EPCO. Okay. And, but I decided to take that uh, opportunity. And the reason why, because during the interview, the HR uh, manager was telling me that the role that you'll be doing in EPCO is as if you're running your own business. Mm. So this was the word that convinced me. Nice. And I, I'm proudly, uh, I can proudly say that I was the first UAE national to run a gas station. Wow. So I was part of the first batch who were trained to run the gas station. It was the first Enoch gas station in the Sheikh Zayed Road. Amazing. But then a year later, I was... Um, uh, given the opportunity to join the founding team of Dubai Intercity okay. uh, back in the 2000. And Dubai Intercity was a revolutionary uh, uh, step in, in Dubai economical uh, milestones. Um, it was the, uh, <coughs> the momentum that Dubai Intercity has injected in the uh, trajectory of Dubai was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, after Dubai Intercity, I started, I worked on developing a concept which is called uh, Dubai Outsource uh, Zone, which is another free zone. So I worked on it from the conceptualization till the delivery. Uh, after Dubai Outsource Zone, uh, I was given a bigger responsibility to become the managing director of the operation for the entire TCOM group to consolidate the operation and, and to create uh, efficiency and effectiveness uh, because Dubai TCOM Investments or TCOM Group was the largest uh, business park operator in the region, okay. operating about 11 free zones. So and we had to create that uh, service vertical that will service all the free zones. And then in 2014, I decided to do my, uh, my own things. So I uh, ventured out into the private business. I did that for five years. Uh, get got into the uh, manufacturing uh, and uh, perci- precision engineering and I was doing a lot of uh, projects for the military 
2019, I sold off that business and I joined the government of Ajman. Okay. Uh, I was asked by the government of Ajman to join and to enable the creation of a disruption in the government uh, services. Uh, so I joined as the uh, uh, head of the Ajman Government Excellence Program. And the idea was basically to encourage the entire government to elevate their um, their services, their uh, uh, customer approach, and to embrace mainly customer-centric uh, positioning when it comes to addressing the public or the, the customers. Mm-hmm. And then toward the um, end of to, uh, 2023, uh, 2022, I was uh, requested to head uh, the Free Zones Authority of Ajman. And the Free Zones Authority of Ajman is the largest economical catalyst in, in Ajman, which is uh, uh, comprising of Ajman Free Zone, Ajman Media City, uh, China Mall, Ajman Used Car Showroom, and uh, at the same time, we're the regulator also of Al Zora City. Wow. So it is okay. the largest uh, economical catalyst that is uh, fostering and boosting the economy in Ajman. Our mandate is basically to continue the growth trajectory uh, by launching uh, more specialized uh, business uh, districts and special economic zones and free zones to. Uh, stimulate diversification in the economy and to contribute significantly to the creative economy that we all aspire to build, which in turn will have uh, definitely a positive impact on job creations, on uh, the economy in general, uh, fostering entrepreneurship landscape in, in the Emirate of Ajman. So here you go, I have uh, (laughs) summarized the last 25 years of my life. (laughs) (laughs) To be honest, uh, this is the longest I've gone on the podcast, especially in the introduction, silent, because (laughs) I'm in awe. I mean, you look so young, yet you've accomplished so much, and I find it fascinating. And I think it's crucial that we bring on guests like yourself on the show to give you know, youngsters and future entrepreneurs and and not even entrepreneurs, but just, uh, you know, graduates uh, that are looking to get into the professional world, Absolutely. to give them that hope, to give them that uh, perseverance, Absolutely. you know, to really follow their dreams and to keep fighting and to continue to be persistent. Definitely. So thank you for that. That was um, a spot on introduction. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, to be honest, it was a good transition into what we want to discuss. So sure. how is Ajman? turning into an investment uh, destination. How are you attracting businesses and entrepreneurs? You know, if we go, I mean, Ajman historically has been uh, pro-business ever since the inception and or even before the inception of the of the country. Uh, so uh, trade is uh, is embedded uh, in, in the DNA of uh, of the leadership of the uh, of the public in general, but not only exclusively to Ajman because this is the DNA of uh, of of the country in general. You know, the country was built on. You know, if we go back to the 50s, you know, the economy was built on pearl finding. And then in the 60s, the, there was the exploration of oil and then all this trade boom uh, right. has happened across the country. But Ajman has always been that uh, dy- a city with full full of dynamism, uh, a very small, uh, close proximity to Dubai. Uh, pioneered actually in, in a lot of indus- industries, uh, marine industry. Uh, if we look at the contribution of Ajman in the marine industry here in the UAE or globally, Ajman has produced a lot of uh, marine uh, uh, companies like uh, Gulf Craft and Ashaali Marine. Um, and then uh, when it comes to the garment, Ajman used to be the regional destination for garments where uh, it was exploring, uh, exporting to Europe and the U.S. Wow. Uh, today, um, uh, food processing is one of the uh, pivotal uh, verticals in, uh, in Ajman economy. Even industrial, I mean, industrial segment contributes to about uh, 35 to 38% of the GDP of Ajman. 
despite the small size of Ajman, but uh, we can see a, a huge distrib- uh, contribution from the industrial uh, segment into the economy of Ajman. Incredible. And, uh, <coughs> but you know, as cities evolve, uh, you know, you start uh, from the lower end of the value chain and then you start to evolve, you start embracing high tech and then you, you get into the more specialized industries and you get into the more value industries. Uh, and especially the constraints that we have in Ajman being a small, uh, it's the smallest city in the UAE. Um, this challenge creates an opportunity. It becomes a driver for you to keep on pushing for growing higher in the value chain and attracting more specialized uh, uh, or uh, companies that are uh, uh, s- some of them in a niche uh, industries and niche segments. Right. Uh, but as I mentioned in my introduction, uh, the role of uh, my role and the role of the Free Zones Authority is to diversify the economy and within the landscape of the next five years, we're going to see a lot of small business uh, districts mushrooming in the city, creating that uh, specialized ecosystem for specific industries to be able to address that specific industry and in a bespoke manner and creating the right ecosystem that will service that uh, be it the education or outsourcing or high tech or digital assets mm-hmm. so we, we're open to uh, explore all the all the industries whatever is fitting correctly with the city uh, strategy mm-hmm. uh, we're a small city um, and uh, we're not going to embark on giga project or mega project all our projects are going to be bespoke small specialized and uh, with very high turnaround amazing so you were just mentioning that um you know you will see an increase in small medium to small businesses uh setting up basically uh, setting up shop in these free zones uh, can you tell us like since you started with uh the authority how many businesses were there and how has that number grown? And what industries have you seen come into the free zones? So be it tech, engineering, media. Yeah, I mean, if we look at the, um, if we look at the free zones in general, the, f- the free zones in general in the UAE has gone through a series of evolutions, you know, ever since the inception of Jabal Ali free zone. Uh, the second free zone, by the way, in the UAE is Ajman free zone. Amazing. Yeah, so... Uh, <coughs> Um, now, looking at the characteristics of the city of Ajman being it's small, you know, uh, younger generation, it fits naturally with the entrepreneurs. Yes. But not only that, you know, entrepreneurs and companies who are looking to start up their businesses, the most important thing for them, the first part of their uh, business journey is to control their cost. Uh, and this is something that we master in Ajman. You know, Ajman has, is uh, the words uh, affordability is synonymous to Ajman. Right. Uh, and when we look at it, and, and this is by the way, by design, it's not by chance, mm-hmm. you know, and this is how the government policies has been uh, developed to control the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the cost of living in the city. But then businesses look at it differently. They look at something called the total cost of ownership. It's not only the cost of setting up the company, cost of setting up company, residence, taking their kids to school, right. the proximity of the city. And uh, now the city is a 15 minute city. You, you don't have to drive to get your things done. You just walk wherever you want to go to. And not only that, you know, the the vibe of the city is so, is so amazing, you know, as it's as if the city has two characteristics. It's, it's a different characteristics and personality in the morning, and it's a different personality in the evening. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the social fabric of the city is so amazing. The balance and the distribution of the different geogra- uh, demographies. So w- when you look at the city, uh, when you look at Ajman, um, uh, it grows into you so fast, you know, uh, because it's so organic, th- so authentic, and it's so business driven, uh, so much of a business driven city. 
uh, everything is uh, close by you can reach uh, the leadership of any organization in in no time you can lead reach the leadership of the city to run ideas to share ideas with them uh, in a very uh, casual fashion uh, so so i would say these are the the natural uh, characteristics but the proactively uh, all the government departments in, in Ajman are proactively analyzing and on a constant base, uh, basis designing solutions that are tailor made to startups to micro businesses to SMEs because SME, SMEs are the economy creators and uh, if we zoom and drill down to Ajman uh, Free Zone and the Free Zones Authority in general, uh, we try to implement our uh, corp- uh, corporate ethics and corporate values in our product that we custom customize it for our uh, clients, where we came up with, uh, we understand the pain that they go through. Mm. You know, the entrepreneurship journey is not a rosy journey. It's a bumpy journey. It's a challenging journey. And we want to be part of the solution in this journey where uh, we design solutions and packages for them that are <coughs> almost uh, the most affordable and cost effective packages across the entire region. But not only that, we reflected our ethics and we say that these packages are all inclusive. Literally, there is no hidden hidden charges. Why? Because we want those entrepreneurs to focus on securing their business and growing their business, not on the bureaucracy of the government. Uh, and then, when we talk about bureaucracy, also this is something you know. To, it's my biggest enemy. Mm. Uh, you know, historically, setting up a company could take several days. Uh, with the design-based thinking approach that we have applied, you know, I had the vision. You know, I want to be the fastest registrar globally, mm. not locally. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> and it was a painful exercise, but now uh, with the Free Zones Authority, you get your license in one click. Unbelievable. Before you finish your cup of coffee, your it's license in, uh, is in your hand. Yeah. This required the disruptive thinking, required a complete transformation in our IT infrastructure, a complete transformation in our uh, regulatory system into our uh, customer journey. So it was an extensive exercise that uh, uh, required millions of hours of collective effort uh, to be invested in the organization to be able to come up with this output that mm. Uh, often we take it for granted. You know, we don't. Uh, we, do, we 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 forget how much effort went into it. But the entrepreneurs des- deserve it, and we want to give it to the entrepreneur at the best affordable value that matches the expectation of the entrepreneur. But not only that; that's just the key that opens the door. When it comes to the government services, uh, we we truly partner with our uh, business community. Uh, we try to help them through the entire journey from setting up the company all the way to opening a bank account and then the post uh, stage of the value added services, helping them with their taxation, with their um, uh, concierge services. But not only that, we also want to integrate them into our community. Uh, we create focus groups. We uh, create a lot of networking events between our com- communities comprising about 15,000 uh, companies. So we do have a lot of events that we we conduct to create these networking activities between our members uh, where we see, we do see a lot of exposure and uh, for the entrepreneurs, but not only that, they would learn from others also. And they will be able to cross sell and uh, uh, add value to each other. So capitalizing on capitalizing on this uh, large community that we have, it's a great value add for the entrepreneurs.